Step 1. Research and target venues. Some venues are known to audiences as having a certain genre of music or audience type. For instance, an alternative rock band based in New York should try not to get a gig at Birdland, which is a famous jazz club, but would probably approach Arlene's Grocery, a small alternative rock venue. Your town may have a bar that books deep house DJs and targets a young club type crowd. There may also be a local house of blues type venue that books blues bands. Each venue's music booking policy attracts a certain audience type. Will your band's music really fit into a particular venue? Now this is important. If you book yourself into the wrong kind of venue, then no one's going to come to your show. Ask your friends, your fans and other bands about their experience performing at or attending a particular venue. Venues can get a terrible reputation for a variety of reasons. The only effect of these reputations as far as you're concerned is that audiences may tend to stay away from shows booked there. Be realistic and keep it small. Work out how many paying customers are likely to come to your show, half that figure, and then book a gig to hold that number of people. You're better off with people standing in line outside and the people inside being packed like sardines than you are having your audience saying to their friends, it was great, but there was nobody there. Step 2. Who books the shows? Research the shows you want to play before you start firing off demo CDs. Does the venue have an in-house promoter or booker? Or do they rely on outside promoters? A small bar or club will usually have an in-house promotion team who is often the owner or a long-term employee. You should be able to find out who these people are through telephone research and then approach them directly. Remember, use the phone. A larger venue may attract outside promoters who merely hire the venue and its facilities for each show. Look at posters outside with Somebody Presents, where somebody is a local or national promoter such as Live Nation. Chain venues such as House of Blues and Barfly may have a national promotions team that works with other independent promoters to book the shows. And this way the chain can book a successful act into each one of its regional venues as a full tour, as part of a larger tour. Now, I get a lot of emails and phone calls from bands starting out who want to get onto a large festival bill. Again, do your research. Go to any festival and observe the acts on the bill. You may look at these bands and say you've never heard of them and that your band should be up there. That is a fair point, but let me tell you something now. Even the bands at the bottom of the stage running order will have a label deal, a major booking agent, or a substantial audience draw. Or all three. Don't waste your time with festivals yet. Step 3. The Approach So you're identifying your key contact. Your key contact is the person who makes the decisions about booking bands into the venue. When doing your research, use the phone. Too many people rely on email and Facebook blasts. Nothing builds a relationship better than actual live telephone conversation. Many music industry professionals prefer to listen to music online through a link to a dedicated website or MySpace, Facebook or YouTube page. Ask the key contact how they would like to receive your music and never, ever send MP3 or WAV files as email attachments. They'll probably end up in the spam folder and you will really, really annoy the recipient. Okay, so when you're uh, approaching the key contacts, you need to pitch to them with both your music and your written content. No more than three tracks. This applies to both CDs and websites, but it's especially true for CDs. Your listener will be hooked after listening to three tracks, or they're going to pass on your material. Either way, the decision will be made before reaching the end of the third track. Putting 12 tracks on the demo website is a waste of your time and resources. Upload time, bandwidth, copying time, label printing, etc. And the listener's time. Think about it. If you hear a song you do not like by a new band, do you immediately ask to hear another song by that band? Of course not. Put your best song first. Do not save the best till last. Even if your listener does like the first track, she may not have the time or inclination to check out the last track. Open up with your killer tune. If it really is your best song, then you're going to have to stand or fall by that track. And never submit a cover or a tribute song unless you're a cover or a tribute band. Presenting someone else's song in a demo is a massive waste of time and opportunity. And it tells the listener absolutely nothing about you or your music. 
Uh, so along with the music, you should have some written content either on the website or as a printed piece of paper with a CD. Keep it brief. The key contact needs to know a bit about you and that's all. She does not need to know where you and your fellow band members met, how long you've been together and where you went to school and that your mum thinks you're going to be the next Beyonce. Never apologise for the quality of your recordings. If you're ashamed of them, don't play them to anyone. Give stats. How many shows have you played? How many people do you usually draw? How many CDs or tracks have you sold? How many people are on your MySpace site? How many forum members? What radio play do you have? Don't lie, but bring up relevant stats. You should name drop. What other bands or acts have you played with or opened up for? And provide testimonials. Do you have a glowing review or email from a music industry professional or well-established band? Now, these are not press reviews. I mean, these are short quotes from someone with authority in the industry. Maybe a reply from a record company to you praising your music. Whatever you do, use those testimonials on your website and in your written content. Be honest. Tell the contact you're not ready to headline a large show, but you can bring a crowd for a support slot. And give a time frame. Are you available for shows now? Are you looking to play as part of a tour in a couple of months? Make sure your contact information, email address and home or mobile phone number are on every item you send out or list online. I've had countless CDs with no contact information on them. And lastly, the follow-up. Don't just email off your message or send your letter, sit back and expect the key contact to ring you up immediately. You should follow up with a phone call about a week later. And my book, The Tour Book, contains a useful telephone script for use with uh, contacting promoters. So, to conclude, to get bigger and better shows, you need to target the key promoter contacts before sending out demos or emailing links. A scattergun approach does not work. Make it concise. And if you're trying to get an opening slot for a national touring headline band, Unless you know the act themselves, their management or their booking agent, you're going to have to appeal to the promoter contact. And the promoter will not be interested unless you can pull in enough people to help sell out the show. And that's true for any gig you play, but especially when you're trying to go for those big opening slots.